hello everyone welcome back to the channel today we are going to finalize the creation of the custom bottom navigation bar that we studied last week in the previous video we created a custom bottom navigation bar inside the home page class today we are going to extract this code to create a custom bottom navigation bar widget that will be independent of the home page this will make our custom bottom navigation bar more usable for future projects we will also see how to make a child widget communicate with a parent widget through the use of callback function in case you miss part one i have a link to it in the description below let's start by creating a stateful widget we will call it custom bottom navigation bar this widget should return a row of items. Let's do this by copy and paste the code that we add in the home page class. Now we can replace this row by the widget that we just created. Let's do some renaming to avoid confusion. The selected item index in the home page class, we will rename it to selected item and the selected item index in the custom bottom navigation bar we will rename it to selected index everything still works the same now let's provide a way to set a default item index for this widget through the constructor for this we'll need to give our widget a property Let's call it default selected index. We'll need a constructor to inject the default selected index. Let's add braces to make it an optional parameter that will have a default value of zero. Now we need to pass the value of this property to the state before building the widget. For this, we will use the init state method. We must use widget to get the property that is given through the constructor. Now we can go back to the parent widget, the home page, and pass a default item index as a parameter. Let's test it. As you can see, we are not able to track the currently selected item anymore. That means we need to provide a way for the widget to communicate with its parent widget, in our case the home page, to let the parent widget know which item is currently selected. For this, let's add another property to our widget. It will be a final of type function that will take an int as an argument. This int will be the value of the selected index. Let's inject it in the constructor as a name parameter. We will also add at required to make sure that it's always passed in. Now we can go back to our gesture detector in the build navbar item method. When the user taps on an item to change the current selection, we can call the callback the function that was provided through the constructor and give it the index of the current item as a parameter. Now we need to go back to the home page and pass a callback function to the constructor of the widget. When the selected item is changed, the callback function will receive the index as a parameter, then call set state to refresh the screen and apply the appropriate changes. 
let's test it. Another thing that it would be useful to do is to allow the user to provide the list of icons that will be displayed in the custom bottom navigation bar instead of hard coding them in the widget itself. To do this, again, let's create the property and check it to the constructor. We will use a for loop to create a list of widgets, a list of items with the help of the build navbar item method. Let's do this right now. We can replace the list of widgets in the row by the list we just created. Also, we must replace the static number of item by the length of the list. Now, let's wrap the video by going back to the homepage class in the constructor of the widget and pass the list of icons. everything works well. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for future content.